Uh, hello, this is the first part of the chapter 5.4, and we will start talking about the linear transformations. And historically, this chapter is really, really hard. It is so technically challenging that it's easy to forget what the idea behind this transformation and what are we trying to achieve. So in this first part of the chapter um, lectures, I'll just introduce the big ideas behind this linear transformation, just inform you what we're trying to do, and then in the uh, consecutive parts, we will look at the details of it. So why do we talk about the linear transformations? The main goal here is to actually use the matrix factorization, which we discovered in the previous chapter, and we will use this factorization to perform a linear transformations. And probably you don't see the connection between the factorization and transformations right away. So I give you a little example to make it more tangible. For example, let's say you are working on some kind of computer algorithm where you at some point need to rotate an image by the angle phi, for example. That's our image of fish, and we just you know, rotate it a little. Obviously, this, trans, uh, this operation underlie the linear transformation. Let's call it T. And the, in the previous chapters, chapter one and two, we even found the uh, specific matrix of transformation which guide this kind of um, image analysis. So, and this is the um, matrix of the transformation. So if we know the angle, we can calculate our matrix and apply it to the every single piece, uh, pixel of our pictures. So every single pixel, let's call it X, will become its image, T of X, which is just a multiplication to a matrix. Really not a big deal, just take every pixel, multiply it. However, there is a slight problem here. We have usually a thousands of pixels in every given uh, image. And every single pixel we have to multiply by this matrix. And that will be really, really slow operation because it's matrix, even there is only four elements, do it thousand times, you know, when we multiply a matrix, we have to multiply row by column, add everything together, it adds up. This process will be very, very slow. So how can we speed it up? Because, you know, you probably turn and uh, rotate the pictures every single day without thinking twice about it. So computers clearly does that somehow. The idea be behind this operation is usually that we don't really directly multiply the matrices, but instead we use a diagonalized matrices to conduct exactly the same transformation. So instead of our original pixel, which we call X, we actually do what mathematicians call change of variables. We're actually dealing with a different uh, vector. Now let's call it U which is just our original vector x, but now is in new basis. So, and we take this vector u and we transform it by its image, we call it t of u, and this transformation is carried out by the matrix D, which is diagonalized matrix and very easy to multiply because diagonal matrix are pleasant. They have zero everywhere except for the main diagonal. And uh, this image is actually will be exactly our original, original image, T of X or A times X, but it's just expressed in the new basis B. And our basis is, we discussed it in the previous chapter, that we uh, uses the basis which consists of eigenvectors of our matrix A. And this matrix P, which we use to move, move back and forth uh, between our variable X and U, is just consists of the basis vector. And we carried out this calculations in the previous chapter. So instead of going from transformation from X to AX, we are 
first convert our x in the new basis by multiplying by inverse of p. Then we finally carrying out the transformation itself by multiplying by the diagonal matrix b. And finally, we get our image in the basis b, which we are convert to the desirable image by multiplying by the vector p. And uh, you probably still pretty skeptical about this. We have one single operation from x to ax by multiply by matrix A. And I propose to replace it with a three mathematical operations. And you might be right for like some just simple small image, you know, like the fish here, probably won't make much difference. But the machine learning algorithms these days usually dealing with the gigabytes of data simultaneously, which consists of the thousands of images like this. So at this uh, multiplication by the uh, diagonal matrix, even if it gives us a one millisecond advantage over the typical operations, it's amplified tremendously in the machines which are dealing with a large amount of data. So yes, my one fish, might won't rotate faster if we go into the diagonal matrix. But if we're dealing of thousands of pictures and maybe even videos, then we have to use the diagonal matrices to be able to process these images efficiently. And again, as I mentioned before, the material in this chapter, which allowed us to go from one basis to another, is quite technical challenge. So for the next couple um, videos, I will go through the details of the transformation and transition. And uh, but then by the last part, I'll bring it up again and reiterate our goal. And we will go through example of how we can actually carry out this long shortcut.